Last class, the main thing about this page, right, the main thing about this page, if you know it's slipping, the force friction is mu k n. If you don't know, if, if, or if, if you know that it is not slipping, then the force friction is just f. You know, we'll solve for it. Uh, but if it's one of those problems where you know it is about to start slipping or it has just started slipping, then you know the force friction is mu s times n. Okay? Uh, but the main thing is we're going to be drawing a free body diagram. We're going to be summing the forces equals not zero, summing the force equals ma, and then think, okay, is what is that acceleration? Maybe it is zero, yes, but sum of the force equals ma. Sum of the force equals mass times acceleration. And then I didn't reiterate that this normal force is the normal force. It, N is a normal force. That's the force between the two surfaces that are sliding, you know, past each other. Okay. So let's do some problems. Y'all know I like to work out some problems. Uh, so how about this one, right? Got a motor that winds this cable with a constant acceleration such that the 20 kilogram crate moves a distance of six meters in three seconds starting from rest. That first sentence right there sounds like the stuff we had been doing before, right? The constant acceleration moves a distance of six meters, a time of three seconds, starts from rest, an initial velocity of zero. Um, thinking ahead, you know, I'm, I'm about to sum the forces equals mass times acceleration. You see that that sentence right there, in a roundabout way, told us the acceleration, right? That's enough information to use one of those three constant acceleration equations, right? You can use constant acceleration equation for this problem. Uh, and so before I even start this problem, I'm gonna take that sentence and just calculate the acceleration. So that sentence right here, um, V initial of zero, it moves a distance of six, a time of three seconds. Um, how about this one? SF equals SI plus VIT plus one half A. T squared. So this is all in one dimension right now, right? It winds it up the incline, it goes in acceleration up the incline, it moves the distance up the incline. So this is kind of a 1D problem. So this kind of move that over the delta S, sorry, is six, right? So let's say it starts at zero, it ends at six. Um, it's initial velocity of zero, one half, a three squared the acceleration is 1.33 meters per second squared up the incline <laughs> right the acceleration is 1.33 meters per second squared up the incline okay I, we're going to use that and maybe we'll need that later on for our um acceleration equations so now we can do our free body diagram okay now let's do our free body diagram all right so here's our block right there what forces do we have acting on this block anybody normal force yes normal force of the incline pushing up on the block it's perpendicular to the incline i'm going to draw my angles in just a in just a second all right what other forces do we have Wait, yes, and I always forget that one. Or not always, but you know, sometimes I'll forget that one. Let's go ahead and give it 20 times 9.81, right? That mass of 20 kilograms is not its weight, right? 20 times 9.81. And what else? Friction, yes. Uh, okay, so what direction is the friction going to be? What direction will the friction be? Yeah. So this block is moving up the incline. And this one, you don't have to overthink it. If this block is moving up the incline, its friction is moving down the incline. Do y'all mind if I go ahead and tell you what force of friction, what is the force of friction going to be for this problem? 
Yeah, it's it's mu k n. Be, why? Because we know it's moving up, right? So this is mu k n. All right, and what else? One more that I haven't drawn. Yes, the tension in the cable. Ropes and cables, they can, ropes can only pull, right? Tension can only pull. All right, there's my, uh, those are my forces. How do you want to define your axes? Remember how I like to define my axes? According to the acceleration, okay? I also kind of look at all those forces and I see many of those forces are aligned along the, you know, along the incline. Um, but I, I always define mine according to the acceleration. The acceleration is along the incline. So I'm going to define my axes along the incline. Okay. So now that I've got my forces drawn, I've got my axes, let me draw some angles. Now, there's no need to draw any angles for N, any angles for T, any angles for the force of friction, because those are, now those are aligned with my axes. Let's draw the angle for the weight. Um, and I think we should just, we'll do this enough that you, you can just see that the slope of the incline is gonna be that angle right there. You'll see this angle right here. We could look at some triangles and, and figure things out but the slope of the incline is going to be that angle uh, right there. Okay. I think we're ready to sum the forces. All right. So let's sum the forces in the X direction. Um, I've got T minus force of friction. Okay, so sorry. I've got T. Do I know the tension? No. That's what I'm trying to find. I've got minus mu k n do i know n not yet minus what component of the weight this sign component equals not zero mass times acceleration in the x oh and what is its acceleration in the x 1.33 1.33. All right, so there we go. That one equation has two unknowns. If it only had one unknown, we'd go ahead and solve for what we could. It has two unknowns. Let's pause and, and jump to our next equation. Summing the forces in Y. N minus the 29.81 cosine 30 equals uh, MA right, it equals 20 times A, this is the acceleration in the Y, and what is the acceleration in the Y? Is it coming off of the incline in the Y direction? Is it digging down into the incline? No, so this one is zero, but I, I like for us to put MA first, and then ask yourself, is there any acceleration and we'll get to a few problems, but don't forget about normal acceleration sometimes. Sometimes it might not seem like there's acceleration, but don't forget about normal acceleration. All right, so hey, this equation only has one unknown. N would be 169.9. Plug this up there, T176. All right, N is not always the weight, correct? The normal force of an object on a surface is not always the weight. Sometimes it is the weight if you've got a horizontal surface and no other forces, but when there are other forces or when it's at an incline, normal force is not the weight. So don't plug in the weight. Solve for the normal force, 169.9, then, then plug it in. Solve for what we're trying to find, okay? If you had started right here, it, it would have been fine. If you had started with a free body diagram and you started without doing what we did up there, what would have happened? You would have had an A right here. You would have had too many unknowns. And so then you would have thought to yourself, okay, I can't solve just from my two equations of motion. What else do I know? Then I think you would have looked at the problem statement and, and figured out, oh, I bet you I can, I bet you I can find that A in order to solve 
those, okay? So if you have more unknowns than equations, then you missed something or you've, you've got to go somewhere else, you know, to, to solve, to find that unknown. All right, that was a good one.